Welcome back to another installment of the What is Wrong with Your Overwatch League Team series. Today I'm going to take the time to talk about two of the strangest teams so far in the 2020 season. The Atlanta Reign and the Los Angeles Gladiators are honestly so confusing. Two teams that could be doing so much better than they are are failing to realize their potential right now. Because their seasons have essentially played out the same, I figured that doing a What is Wrong with Your Overwatch League Team double feature was in order. Each of them have really struggled to post the results that we kind of expected out of them heading into Season 3. I mean, look at their records. 6-6 six and 5-6 six and, five and six is quite pedestrian. It's the definition of average. Now granted, 10th and 13th place respectively isn't horrible, but there's a problem that presents itself here. They aren't safe. Another slip up or two, and they're both on the outside looking in come playoff time. They aren't untouchable, and somebody could easily pass by them on any given week. So now we have to ask ourselves, what is wrong with the Los Angeles Gladiators and Atlanta Reign? Why are they like this? Well, as I mentioned a few moments ago, it all revolves around their crazy inconsistencies. But there's a lot of things that branches into that, of course. Let's start with Atlanta, though. In my opinion, it's a bit more obvious with them. Since their massive choke against the Valiant, the common consensus has been it's a coaching issue, and I wholeheartedly agree. Prior to Season 3, I never really had a problem with head coach Sefi. I saw him as a relatively decent coach. Not top tier, but definitely not at the bottom either. Now 2020 comes along, and suddenly everything takes a step back. The discipline, the strategizing, the adaptations, it all seemingly flew out the window. The adaptations in particular have been a huge problem. I mean, it's been dreadful. Anytime their opponents try something unique, they go into a straight up panic. How on earth can you expect to be anybody decent if you can't adjust your play on the fly? Their games against both LA teams make for excellent examples of this weakness. When they got reverse swept by the Valiant, they had no answer for the sudden anti-Echo comp they opted into. The Valiant knew that they would never beat the Reign in the Echo Mirror match, so they decided to not even bother with it after halftime. And right away, it makes a massive difference as Atlanta clearly didn't see it coming. Now to be fair, the Reign did adjust their strategy after dropping Hanamura, but the execution was very poor. And that is further evidence that they weren't ready for something untrue traditional. Could a certain amount of their failure to adjust lie on the players? Yeah, of course. They're part of the problem too, but it's my assumption that coaching drilled nothing but what was meta into their players' heads. Sharp was probably so used to playing Echo that he practically never used Sombra at all heading into that weekend, so I can't even blame him that much even if he did have a lackluster performance. The players and coaches alike were ill-prepared for something out of the box, and they paid the price for it. By the time Busan rolled around, they were totally boomed. It was a sad and pathetic collapse that probably could have been avoided if the coaches and players stayed a bit more composed. And the same thing pretty much happened in their series with the Gladiators. The Glads pulled out that crazy Reinhardt pocket strat, and Atlanta had no clue what to do. While playing Cloudy in these crazy positions is unexpected, they failed to catch on to it. They couldn't adjust and punish it to save their lives. Honestly, I think I let previous success blind me because there were some examples of this in Season 2 as well. It didn't occur as often, but there were some similar outcomes. If I were at the head of the Atlanta Reign organization, I'd consider making some changes at the coaching positions. There's two options here, I feel. Either part ways with Sefi and hire someone new as your head coach, or sign an extra person to the staff. A true dedicated strategic coach might be the help this team drastically needs. I mean, look at Shanghai or Philly. They have tons of coaches under their organizations. There's nothing wrong with having extra men on your staff. You can pull off more jobs that way and you can split the workload better. So why not get a guy for strategy or maybe another assistant? Or what about a strategic analyst even? That could work too. Shanghai and Philly have five and four people working together respectively. If Atlanta really want to hold on to Sefi, then that's okay. There are alternatives to improving your coaching. But what's not okay is to continue to do nothing. This season has been a huge disappointment for them, and acting like everything is fine is not going to improve the situation. While coaching and adaptation are some huge issues the Atlanta Rain are dealing with, there are some other things that contribute to their struggles as well. It really doesn't help that their players aren't quite living up to the hype. Take Gator and Hawk, for example. They were supposedly going to be a solid tank line this year, but they've kind of just been decent. They're like this slightly above average B-tier type of duo to me. 
Maybe it's time to mix and match. I would not be opposed to seeing more Pokepo. He's no slouch on the Arisa himself. Last year he proved to be a consistent and reliable player, so why not give him some more time to shine? Is he really not compatible with Hawk? He literally had three different off-tank partners that he played with last year, if you count Gator during the playoffs, and he pretty much saw no drop-off in performance with any one of them. I'd give him a shot and see what happens. Why not? And speaking of Season 2 players, why is Erster completely useless now? From one of the best DPS players in the league to a bench player who rarely plays. What on earth happened to that guy? I really do wonder. Could he be washed? Does he not synergize well with the team anymore? I can understand his absence from a hero pull standpoint sometimes, but that's about it. With both Sharp and Edison playing Echo over him, it's obvious that he can't play up to an Overwatch League level on that hero currently. But what's the excuse for Tracer Ash, let's say? You can't even begin to tell me that he can't play a good Tracer. The man is nasty on her. Is Edison really that much better? I honestly don't see it. Edison is great, I don't have a problem with him at all, but shouldn't him and Erster be playing at the same time in that kind of meta? There's some serious potential there. Even if Erster hasn't been all that great this year, Tracer is one of his specialties. If he one-tricked her, I'm fairly certain he could make good contributions. I find it extremely hard to believe that Erster has declined to the point where he's completely and utterly useless. There has to be certain situations where you can utilize him. This team needs life, and a few changes within the lineup could help bring it out. Oh, and if you're wondering about the supports, they haven't been all that crazy either. Dogman hasn't really improved, and Masa hasn't been as strong surprisingly. In fact, he's been kind of inting a little bit. He's been one of the biggest feeders on both Lucio and Brigitta in the league, as you can see with his combined averages on the tail. Masa has to be playing a little better than this. I know that he likes to be super aggressive, but he might want to tone it down a bit for the sake of his team. He needs to play like he does on Baptiste, which I think he's pretty strong on this year. Instead of going for the big plays, I'd love to see him prioritize his teammates a bit more like he does on BAP. It might do them some good, but generally speaking, the team as a whole is ridiculously inconsistent. Nobody has been safe. But there's a certain pattern that seems to be present with their performances. Anytime they play a relatively decent team, like think Gladiators, let's say, they don't show up. But if they're taking on somebody below average, then they roll them. Given the skill cap of this roster, that's really sad. How can they not overcome anybody decent? On paper, they are incredibly talented, and their roster runs deep, so their versatility is top-notch. And yet, they can't seem to utilize any of it in the right way. That, in my opinion, is the biggest problem of all. Not being able to rise up and take down any decent competition is pretty sad. Season 2 Atlanta was all about overcoming juggernauts. They beat all sorts of good teams. So where did the magic go? It's not like the team has changed all that much. It's extremely frustrating to watch. Did you know that they haven't beaten a single team with more wins than losses at the time of their meeting this year? Not one. Florida didn't even hit their stride yet when they played them that time before the May Melee when they like 3-0'd them, I believe. Besides that Florida game, their wins this year during the regular season come against Toronto twice, Washington, Boston, and Houston when they were only first starting to incorporate hydration at main tank. Those are their accomplishments this year, ladies and gentlemen. That should not be their limit. They're far too capable. It's a lot easier said than done, but that is something Atlanta has to work on. Finding ways to defeat the above-average teams is crucial. Beating somebody good is not only going to help you record-wise, but it convinces the entire team that they are capable. It gives you confidence. When you can't pull off those types of victories ever, it can really take a toll on you mentally. The rain can't let it keep going like this. The next time they play somebody strong, they gotta come out swinging. No fizzling out. Get the dub. It's time for Sefi and the boys to be clutch. They really need to study hard and formulate a foolproof game plan. Because I'm telling you, if they pull it off, they're going to feel unstoppable. Atlanta is a largely momentum-based team. When they were really starting to click during Stage 4 last year, they were taking down everybody. They went undefeated, and that confidence eventually led them to beating the Shock in a playoff game. But of course, action speaks louder than words. Let's see what they can do in the upcoming weeks. Now let's go over the Gladiators. With them, it's a bit weirder because there's less that I feel they need to change. With them, it's more of the we can't win consistently type of thing. And it's not even like they haven't beaten anybody good this year like Atlanta. I know it was a bad week for them and all, but they still did defeat the Shock. And they've taken down the Valiant too. They even proved they're a better team than Atlanta recently. They've lost to good competition too, sure, but they've proven they can hang in there sometimes. 
The Gladiators have a hard time winning from a general standpoint. It's an execution thing with them, I feel. They can't go on a win streak to save their lives. They can get a decent win one week, then lose to somebody they have no business losing to the next. Take their most recent games. They beat a team around their level in the rain during week 19, then got completely outplayed by the Houston Outlaws the next. I'll give credit where it's due, of course, to Houston, because they certainly have been improving, but this is a game you shouldn't be losing if you're the Gladiator still. And if you remember, it happened with Boston a while back too. I know those guys were improving as well, but these are teams that you're supposed to be stronger than on paper, so what's the deal? These are supposed to be the games that balance out the difficult schedule you've dealt with this season. These are the ones you have to win. Dropping them hurts you so badly in the long run. They need to be able to stay in the race for a playoff spot. Losing these types of games are what keep them from consistently being in the top 12 in terms of the playoff race. I swear it's like they don't take these games seriously or something, and that's something I'd like to see the Gladiators improve upon for sure. No more losing to anybody you should be winning against. Take all of your opponents seriously. Maintaining a decent pace here is key. You don't have to be perfect, in fact I'm not expecting you to, but you can't be dropping these types of games all season or it's not going to end well. Besides poor execution and maybe underestimating some opponents here and there, what exactly makes the Gladiator so inconsistent? Well, it's not exactly easy to pinpoint because of how talented this team is on paper, but I think I've managed to come up with a few different reasons. So for one, the Gladiator support line does not always show up. In fact, I would argue this is the worst year Big Goose and Shaz have had in their Overwatch League careers. It's weird to say it because they've been the model of consistency up until now. They've always been an above average duo that you can rely on. But Season 3 doesn't always give off that same vibe. Like Shaz in particular, I'd say hasn't been doing too bad. I think there is a slight decline in production, but it's nothing serious. I think he's done just fine. It's more Big Goose that I'm worried about. He is nowhere close to what he used to be. I mean, he's not even on the radar this year. 24th in total healing is unlike him, considering that him and Shaz are two of the all-time leaders in that category. But it's not just the lack of support that bugs me. His aggressive style has not been panning out this year. He's kind of been a feeder, if I'm going to be completely honest. I mean, you can't exactly keep your team up if you're always dead. Take the league-wide Lucio stats for example here. Among all players with a minimum of one hour played on Lucio, he ranks the second highest with only Car Car having a higher death rate. What's strange about it all is his healing rate is actually the third best in the league on Lucio, believe it or not, but take a moment to imagine if he had a lower death rate now. He might be the league leader by a solid margin. Now, I know Lucio isn't always relevant in the meta, but the Gladiators tend to utilize that character more than most, which is pretty evident by the off-meta Reinhardt strategies they love to try. Only a select few teams play more Lucio, and you have to keep in mind that, like, pretty much all of those teams have played more games than the Gladiators. But it's not just as Lucio that concerns me. Oh no. The same types of issues present themselves with his Brig too. Take the same averages we were looking at with Lucio and apply them to Brig now. Would you look at that? His death rate is one of the worst on this hero too. He's tied for top 5. And unlike his Lucio, he practically gets no value with his Brig. He's bottom 3 in healing. For such an aggressive support player, it's kind of strange to see him practically do no damage or healing but still feed somehow. Him and Masa both have really been weird this year, I don't know what it is. But I see it like this with Big Goose. His Lucio and Bap are alright, and his Brig is bad. All in all, he's not really going above and beyond with any hero he touches. It's sad too because he could definitely be one of the better Lucio players at least if he could get that death rate down and stop making such silly mistakes. The Gladiators need to have him adjust. I would encourage Big Goose to play a tiny bit more passively. Either that, or drill it into his head that he's gotta work on his positioning. If things continue this way, the Gladiators may need to look elsewhere at main support. My final positional issue with this team though is main tank. They seem to be in a pretty weird place in that regard. Like, OG has had his moments, but most of them came earlier in the season. Early season OG was a shining star. His Reinhardt and Winston were both pretty good from the eye test perspective and statistically, but since Orisa became more relevant, he's kind of been boomed. That's definitely still his worst hero, but he has no choice but to be the guy for them there because Cloudy essentially has been a Reinhardt specialist. Besides not being the best on Orisa, I really do think OG hasn't been in a great place mentally as of late. From what I've noticed since the beginning of his career, his mood and confidence fluctuate a lot. When he's playing well and he shows satisfaction with where he currently stands, everything's fine. His personality is upbeat and it shows with his gameplay. But the moment he becomes unsure of himself or feels like he's not good enough, it all falls apart. 
Right now, he's hitting one of his lows. If you follow him on social media, you would have already known that he's been tweeting some sad things the last couple of weeks. I've seen him say multiple times that he's thinking about stuff for some reason, and there was this other time where he thought his English wasn't improving. In fact, he thought it was getting worse. All of these negative emotions and his lack of confidence is dragging him down. It's clearly affecting his play. If I were the Gladiators, I would consider giving OG a short break so he can get a desperately needed mental reset. Either that, or they need to find somebody on that team to give him better encouragement. Or maybe, instead of trying to shoulder this responsibility on one individual, they could make it a team effort of sorts. The players and coaches could be more encouraging and try their best to create a better environment for him. And you know, Deepay's a good guy, so I'm sure he could think of something to help out with OG individually. And you know, I wouldn't be opposed to him getting some sort of mental health professional if he feels like he might need one. It's not an easy thing to go about fixing, but if the Gladiators handle it right, then they'll get back the OG they desperately need. I would love it if the Gladiators can get him out of his own head for good. Make OG more confident than he's ever been before. When he's at the top of his game, he is a scary player to deal with, and there's no doubt about that. But when you can't get that version of him consistently, it really hurts you in the long run. I have hope that the Gladiators can figure this out. I know for a fact that OG is in a better place than he was when he played for Dallas, so I'm confident that it wouldn't be super difficult so long as they all stay committed. Besides that though, there's nothing else that really bothers me about this team. They lack consistency, they fail to execute sometimes, and a few of their players aren't in a great place. Both them and the Rain are not in a horrible spot though. They aren't like some of the bottom feeders out there who are completely hopeless. There's still time to turn it around, but changes need to happen sooner rather than later or that hope will eventually die down, which would in turn give us two extremely disappointing seasons from teams with high expectations. So now I ask you guys, what do you think is wrong with the Gladiators and Rain, and how would you go about fixing them? Leave a comment below and let's continue the discussion. And if you enjoyed the video, then be sure to like and subscribe. Don't forget that you can also follow me on Twitter at ATP Overwatch, join the Discord through the link in the description, and become a channel member if you wish to further support me. And as always, thanks so much for watching, I really do appreciate you all, and until next time, this is ATP, signing out. Peace.